Hey everybody, Daniel Rothamel here with another screencast of one of my projects for my Level Up in Tech Bootcamp. And this is actually sort of a remix of one of the projects that I did a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of weeks ago, you might remember, we did a simple project where we just created a T2 Nano EC2 instance on AWS. And then uh, in the user data field, we used a script that updated all the packages, installed Apache and started Apache. And then we had to verify that it was done correctly using the public IP. Well, that project had a little extra credit section that was to do all of that through the AWS CLI, command line interface. Now. At that time, I didn't know all of the commands to do that. Uh, but the, a couple of weekends ago, uh, my fellow teammate at Level Up in Tech, uh, Bowman Avong, uh, he figured out the commands that I didn't know. And so we worked together to get all the commands that we needed to do this. So I wanted to come back and record this again so that you can see it with being done from the uh, AWS command line interface. And for this one, I'm gonna do it actually through Cloud9 so that it's sort of standardized. We don't have to worry about differences between Mac and uh, Windows and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, I definitely wanna give a, a shout out to my man Bowman. There's Bowman there on LinkedIn. Bowman's on Medium also. Um, and this was his uh, post where he did the same thing I did, but we're going to do it now through the uh, command line interface. So uh, if we go back and just remember what we're doing here, uh, creating the instance, installing Apache, or updating the instance, installing Apache, and then doing this through the AWS CLI. So like I said, we're going to do this uh, using Cloud Shell on AWS. So Cloud Shell is AWS's uh, native terminal system. Um, so we come right up here to this little icon and that will launch for us a Cloud Shell instance. So it tells you what Cloud Shell is. It's got the pre-installed tools on it. It's already got the CLI on it. It's already configured to whatever user you're logged in as. It has Python, it has Node.js. So uh, it's, it's pretty uh, cool that you can, you know, use AWS's Cloud Shell terminal and you don't have to open a terminal on your local machine if you don't want to. So we're gonna let this environment, we're, the environment is gonna take, it takes just a little bit. Sometimes it's faster than other times. I don't know why it changes. Um, but if we'll go back here and I'll show you the different commands that we're going to need in order to do this. So all of these commands uh, I took from, uh, well, Bowman researched them and I researched them. So all these come from AWS documentation. Now it took us a little while to find all the things we needed, but uh, it's all from various AWS uh, documentation. AWS documentation is really good, it's very thorough. So, and it's easy to understand and implement. So that's where we got all the commands from. But those, these are the commands that we're going to be using to, do everything we need to create our instance and then also install Apache. All right, let's see if it's up and running. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go, Cloud Shell. All right, so here we are, so now we're in. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do in order to do this properly is we're going to have to create security groups because by default, EC2 instances don't allow public access on the public IP. So we have to, uh, via public IP, so we have to create a um, security group that will allow that for the instance. Now, if you were doing this through the console, you would check the little button that enables HTTP access, it enables public access, but we're doing it through the command line, so we have to do it manually. So let's go back to our first command, which is the command to create a security group. So we're gonna copy that bring it back in here. All right, so this is AWS EC2 create a security group. We're going to the group name is going to be my-sg and the description is my security group. So all we're doing is just creating the group. All right, so now we have the group ID. This group ID is very important. We're going to need that for the subsequent commands. So now we need a command to alter this group to actually allow the access from the uh from http from the public so the first thing we need to do is copy this command we're going to go back we're going to put in the command now we need to change it a little bit so the first thing we want to do 
And so you can see this is AWS right here, AWS EC2 Authorized Security Group Ingress, because that's what we're doing. So here is where we need to put the security group ID, which we got up here in the last step. So we take that ID and we paste it there, okay? Now the protocol is TCP port 80 because we're, this is HTTP and our CIDR range, because we want it to be public, we're gonna have to do zero, oh, 0, 0.0.0.0 slash zero. So that's our IPv4 uh, CIDR range because we want it to be public. All right, so let's do that. All right, so that's successful. Now, we want to do it again for port 22 so that we have SSH access. Just in case we needed to SSH in, we could. Um, I mean, you don't have to do this for this project, but we're going to. All right, so that's created. So now we have everything we need in our security group. So the next step in creating this EC2 instance is we need to create our key pair. So uh, if you know, if you've done this through the console, that one of your last steps is creating a key pair so that you can SSH into your EC2 instance. So this time we're gonna do that through the command line. So we put this in. So this is AWS EC2 create key pair, and then we name the key pair. We're just gonna call it my key pair. Uh, and then we're gonna take the key material, and then we're gonna output that key material into a file called mykeypair.pem. So we do that. All right, so that's done. We've done that successfully. Now, this is how next we're going to actually spin up this instance. In order to do that, one of the elements you need in an instance is the AMI ID. So that's the image ID that Amazon uses to, for the type of instance that you have. So we want a T2 Nano that is using the, um, AWS Linux based AMI. So the difficulty, this is where I had difficulty was like, I, I couldn't figure out the command to find the image ID. I could go into the console and find it, uh, but I need the command to do that. Well, Bowman was the one who found the command. So this is the command that we need. And then um, what we do here actually, well, hold on, I'll edit it when we get in there. All right. So uh, Cloud9 always warns you about multi-line um, commands, um, but we're still going to put it in there. Okay. Um, so we did it. Okay, so this is the AMI that it spits out. So this is a long command, and it, it puts out output. We output the text, and this is what we get. We get this AMI ID. Okay, so next we're going to need to actually launch the instance. Okay, so here is the long command we need to launch the instance. So we'll go back, put this in, we're gonna get the thing again. Okay, it ran it automatically. Hold on, we didn't wanna do that. Okay, so, um, oh, wait. First, we need to create the the file for the user data. The user data didn't do that. Okay. Oh. So actually, we're going to run this and let it fail again. Okay. So now we need to create our uh, file for the user data that it's going to run the script. So we're going to do vim and we're going to do user data dot sh, and that will take us into a Vim environment so that we can do this. All right, so now we're gonna go back and we're gonna get the commands that we need in order to do that. So this, this is the script that we need to run in order to install Apache, uh, to update our instance and then install Apache and activate it. So we're gonna take these and now we need to insert, there we go. Now we've got it in there. Now we can exit out, write that. Okay, so now it's in there. Um, so basically we're just yum update 
uh, why tag why for just hit yes because we're not going to be there to actually say yes and then yum install http tag why and then uh, this is to start to start apache and that's to enable apache whenever the instance starts okay so now we can go back to that code here uh, or we can go back to the command here so here we need this is where we need we're gonna have to go back so our security ID our security group ID goes here so we can scroll back up and we get our group ID and then our image ID so we use our key pair the my key pair our image ID goes here and I'm gonna, I lost it on my screen there. I'm gonna pull it back from the command or pull it back from the output here. Okay. But this is where you would get this from that command that we ran previously to get the ID. So put that in there. And so this should run this should create the EC2 instance. So we see it's a type two micro We're using my key pair We're using the security group ID that we created before. And the user data is the file that we just created that user data dot sh. So we hit enter. Oh, I had, I, I put the, uh, I had a typo. Let's go back up and let's fix that typo. It had AMI in there twice. Let me go back. We gotta take that out. I copied, uh, incorrectly copied and pasted. There we go. There we go. Now we'll run it. Okay, so here we are and now it's created and so we can uh, check to make sure we did everything correctly. If we go back to the management console and we go here to EC2 and we see we have one instance running. That's the one we just created. It's running. We take our instance ID and we can take the public IP address and we can put it in a new window and there we go. So our Apache is installed and running and so we did everything correctly. So there you go. That's how you can install uh, or start an EC2 instance, use the user data that you create to create, uh, to, in, to update the system, to update the EC2 instance and install an Apache, simple Apache web server. Um, so that was pretty cool. And I'm glad we were able to figure out with some teamwork there with Bowman, we got all the commands in and we did it all through AWS, um, and the CLI and using a uh, cloud shell. So that was cool because we did it that way too. All right. So thanks a lot for joining me and I'll see y'all on the next screencast.